Listen to this, I've got a promise for you, Bentner's story is the craziest I've ever told on this channel. You thought Palotelli was funny, well this is another level. If someone handed me the story of his life and told me it was the script for a hangover spin-off, I would 100% believe it. From degenerate gambling to dating royalty to smashing up cars, seducing the manager's daughter, sneaking girls into the team hotel, punching cab drivers, running naked down the street and even running for prime minister, if it's reckless or dumb, Bentner has done it. And the worst of all, he did most of it while playing for some of the biggest clubs in the world. He's a striker who averaged 0.2 goals per game over his career. It's hard to see why any club would want him already, and that's without taking in consideration that they had to deal with his shenanigans. You see, Bentner didn't realize that maybe he was not so good. In 2009, Arsenal ran a psychological evaluation on their players and the shrink nearly spat out his drink when he saw Bentner's answers. There was this bracket for self-perceived competence. And in his own words, on a scale up to 10, Bentner got an 11. In his mind, he was quite simply the greatest player to ever touch a ball. Which actually made the process of researching his life much easier, because trust me, if there's one thing this guy loves to talk about, it's himself. But okay, let's give him the benefit of the doubt for a second. If you think about it, I can see why he thought so highly of himself. He was just some kid from Denmark and suddenly at 16 he's winning the award for Danish Young Player of the Year, which out of nowhere got him shipped off to Arsenal, literally joining the Invincibles. Soon he had debuted for them and a year and a half later as he finally starts getting some decent game time, he comes on against Spurs in his first ever North London derby and just 6 seconds seconds after stepping on the pitch, he scores a great header to give Arsenal the win. Literally, the fastest goal ever scored by a substitute. No wonder he thought he was the greatest of all time. Though, to be fair, if anyone were to believe him at the time, they would be quickly corrected. A week later, he got his first ever start in the Premier League only to get the first red card of his career right away, and a month after that, on his second meeting with Tottenham, not only did he score an own goal as Arsenal got trashed 5-1, but he also got into a fight with Adebayor, who sent Bentner into the locker rooms with a bloody nose, supposedly because Bentner refused to pass him the ball, since he didn't like his vibe. <laughs> But look, I'm getting ahead of myself, because before this chaotic first actual season with Arsenal, they loaned him out to Birmingham in the championship and it was absolute insanity. First of all, there's reports saying that the thing that got them to loan him away was that he was caught hiding in the ladies' dressing room to avoid training. Regardless, that's not the point. At Birmingham, he was doing pretty well. Until the coach Steve Bruce heard that he was going to the strip club four times a week, which, again, raised some worries, especially after he confronted Bentner, who corrected him, saying that in fact he went there every day except for Sunday. According to Bentner himself, after correcting him, Steve got so red I generally thought he was having a heart attack. But look, it was still really helping the team on their quest for promotion and Steve Bruce was very impressed. That is, until a teammate bet Bentner £1,000 that he could didn't get Steve Bruce's daughter to go on a date with him. However, not only did he manage to take her out, the two ended up falling in love and getting into a relationship. Steve Bruce wasn't very happy. How somehow in the middle of all of this, this guy still managed to finish the season as the team's second highest goal scorer, leading them to promotion and not only earning a callback from Arsenal but interest from the likes of Lyon in Milan, we will never know. Regardless, this sort of brings us back to the start of the story. Back at Arsenal, after getting into that whole deal with Adebayor, Bentner began falling out of favor with Wenger again, and though he'd still score a late equalizer versus Villa to take Arsenal to the top of the table for a while, not only would they end up in third place regardless, but Bentner would start developing a bit of a gambling addiction that led him to lose 400k on the roulette in a single night. And by the time the next season came around, he had only gotten even more out of control. So, first of all, he breaks up with Steve Bruce's daughter, leading him to spend his summer consoling her instead of sunbathing and developing a brand new level of resentment towards Bentner. And well, maybe the karma came to bite him back because following the breakup, Bentner went on a rampage, meeting up with a different girl every single night and eventually being blackmailed by one of them who told him she would only end her pregnancy if he bought her a boob job, to which, very rationally, he obliged. 
Regardless, it was only after one of them threatened to post pictures of him naked online that he found a solution, telling everyone in his biography, from there on out, I stuck with sex workers. Though, that didn't in any way slow down the drama. First, he was caught sneaking some of those ladies into the hotel pool so he and his teammates could play some very strange games. Let's leave it at that. And then he woke up one morning to a loud crash. One of his ex-girlfriends had dropped a cobblestone through the back window of his Porsche. And right as it seemed there was no way to stop the madness, a miracle happened. Danish Baroness Caroline Lewell Brockdorf met him and once again they fell in love. Suddenly, young Nicholas was no longer an ordinary man. He was a royal, Lord Bentner. Still, though they even had a son together, the relationship didn't last very long, but the nickname, it stuck. If you're wondering how the football side of things were going, well, by then he was well into his second season back at Arsenal and among all of the inconsistency, the highlight had been an 87th minute winner versus Dynamo Kiev, which he scored while most of the Dynamo players waited for the ball to be thrown out of bounds as one of their players waited for medical assistance, which also didn't stop him from celebrating like he had scored the next Puskas winner, even taking off his shirt. After all, to be fair, that goal did steal Arsenal's spot in the knockout stages, but honestly, in the end, it was all for nothing. In the last 16 versus Roma, he was booed after missing a handful of goal-scoring chances, and even worse, only hours after being knocked out by United in the semi-finals, he was photographed leaving a nightclub with his pants hanging around his ankles, and when the press asked him what happened, he claimed his drinks had been spiked. And I know what you're thinking, what a poor excuse of a footballer, but no matter what you think, by the end of the year, he still received the award for Danish Player of the Year, only further fueling his delusions, which might have been what led him to release the following statement in the press. Within five years, I will be the top scorer of the Premier League. I look around, I see the other players and they aren't better than me. I will be better than Zlatan. He is older than me and by the time I hit my prime, you will all see me as one of the world's greatest stars. Strikers. To be fair, it does seem like him and Zlatan share the same level of self-confidence. Regardless, following statements like these, everyone was anxious to see what Bentner would bring to the table. But instead of goals and trophies, he mostly made the headlines first for crashing and completely destroying his Aston Martin on the way to training, and then for, well, this one is kind of hard to explain. So, think about it like this. In Denmark, when you get fined for speeding or going past a red light, the fine you get is not a fixed rate. It's the percentage of your income. And Bentner was making millions a year, and he also happened to repeatedly insist on driving the wrong way down a one-way street right by his house, as, and I'm quoting him, it made it much faster to get downtown. The conclusion to all of this is that he ended up paying so much money in fines over that year that his local police department ended up the year with the biggest profit margins in their history. Still, in the middle of all of this, Bentner 100% believed it wasn't his fault things kept going wrong. So, he did the only rational thing he could think of and went to a fortune teller. <sighs> who convinced them it was all because his number 26 shirt was bad luck, so he switched to number 52, supposedly because 5 plus 2 equals 7, and 7 is his lucky number, or something. But unfortunately for him, 52 also matched his recently updated 52k weekly wage, which got the fans to think he was just flexing on them. But hey, let's not be so harsh on the guy for a second. Despite the fact that it took him nearly three months to recover from a surgery that supposedly should have left him out for three weeks, he did have his moments that season, scoring a Champions League hat-trick against Porto, even being named Arsenal Player of the Month at one point after scoring their consolation goal as they got trashed in the Camp Nou, and his World Cup performance was surprisingly positive. For a second you could almost believe he was actually good, but then, well, it was all downhill from here. So, the World Cup made his injury 10 times worse, leaving him on the sidelines for 4 months, and from there on out, he never really got much of a chance, which pissed him off and led him to claim he would never play for Arsenal again. And it was then, amid rumors of Borussia Dortmund and Hamburg, that Steve Bruce's name showed up on his phone, and, expecting a scolding, he picks it up and instead the manager tells him all is forgiven and invites him to join him at Sunderland. 
And well, since it sort of owed him one, he just accepted the offer and it sort of worked out actually. He seemed rejuvenated, he wasn't scoring loads of goals but he was his team's top scorer and even after breaking his eye socket and watching Steve Bruce get the sack, he held on and helped Sunderland stay in the Premier League. But that is not to say that he kept out of trouble. At all. One night, as a way to get revenge on rivals Newcastle, he and his teammate Lee Cattermole went over to their side of town and began vandalizing every car on the street. Obviously they got charged with destruction of property, but the funny part in all of this is that they were so drunk they didn't even realize they were still in Sunderland's side of town. I can't stress this enough, the two towns are separated by a river, how did they not notice? Well, I don't know, but what I do know is that Bentner was surprisingly good at the Euros, and they would probably have been some of the most memorable performances of his career had he not overshadowed them completely by pulling down his shorts as he celebrated a goal to advertise a gambling website, with the moment going viral and leading him to be fined 100,000 euros by UEFA. Regardless, in some manner, Juventus looked at all of this and said, you know what, let me get some of that. <laughs> and signed Bentner on a one-season loan with an option to buy at the end. By December, he was only starting his second match and he made it all much better by injuring his tie to the point he needed surgery again. And yes, you guessed it, he should have been out for two months, but instead, he was out for the rest of the season doing God knows what. Actually, I don't know. He was being arrested for drunk driving four times above the legal limit, getting his license suspended for three years and a 147 euro fine as well as a six-month ban from the national team. Once, a manager in the Juventus merchandise store at their stadium claimed Bentner was so unpopular throughout his time there that over the whole season they didn't sell a single shirt with his name on the back. Anyways, forced to return to Arsenal with his tail between his legs, he still found it in him to tell the press that he saw himself playing for Real or Barca in the future. But instead, he ended up being forced by Wenger to stay at the club as he needed a backup striker. Despite that, he barely played and instead the season is remembered as the one where he was charged with assault in his hometown Copenhagen for dropping his pants to the floor and rubbing himself on a taxi, asking the taxi driver for a favor, let's put it like that. Funniest part of the whole deal, no one at Arsenal even knew he wasn't in London. <laughs> In 2014, somehow, despite having Bas Dost, De Bruyne, Schurla, Luis Gustavo, Naldo and Vieirinha, Wolfsburg decided that what they needed was Bentner, with their manager referring to him as a seasoned player at his prime with a lot of international experience. Yeah, I am shaking my head right now. Maybe the fact he, as a striker, decided to wear the number 3 on his back because his mom said it looked nice should have been an alert to how seriously he was taking this opportunity, but I guess they didn't care. Eventually, Bentner would spend two seasons at the club, not playing much but still getting two iconic last-minute goals, a winner versus Inter at the San Siro and an equalizer versus Bayern in the Super Cup, which did give them the title but did not stop them from terminating his contract midway through the season after he posed with a Mercedes on Instagram, very well knowing the club's biggest sponsor was Volkswagen. Keep in mind they had already allowed him to get away with joking about running as a candidate for Danish Prime Minister over the summer after a tabloid had bought him a square foot of land in Scotland in order to officially award him the title of Lord. Yeah, I'm not even gonna talk much about his time at Nottingham Forest, the most notorious moment was literally a known goal. That's all you need to know, and suddenly he was a 29 year old free agent. Which oddly enough might have brought him down to earth for a second, leading him to join Rosenborg and actually start performing, getting about 35 goals in his two seasons there and even earning a shocking call up to the 2018 World Cup, though an injury would unfortunately deprive us of another Lord Bentner World Cup masterclass. But still, he finished off his time at Rosenborg in style by punching a cab driver in the face over a four pound fare and getting himself 50 days of house arrest. Once that was done, he joined his hometown club FC Copenhagen with his shirts selling out immediately, except soon it would be exposed that that only happened because he bought a bunch of them. 
Yeah, pretty sad, but by the way, even more sad was the reaction of the fans after his first training session, quickly realizing he did not have it anymore. And they were right, after 6 matches for the club, the Lord was gone. Meanwhile, the pandemic came in the way and suddenly he had retired, and moved on to other industries, first hosting a TV show where he pranked celebrities and now hosting CSGO tournaments. He's still only 35. I would say it was a waste, but I'm not sure anymore.